Hello. This video shows the Coursera setup steps, including your account on Coursera, steps to enroll students, and how to monitor students' learning progress. To access the admin console, sign into Coursera with your credentials. Coursera provides several dashboards at different stages of the program to track the progress of students. The admin dashboard and the program admin pages show the data for your members, learners, and completers. This sample data shows you how students are progressing through your learning programs. A student's status may be active, inactive, or at risk. In the Invitations tab, you can track and see the status of the invitations that you've sent to the students. You can also resend invitations if needed. To add and invite individual students, complete the following steps. Open the Coursera program for the Associate Cloud Engineer track. Click on the Invitations icon. Enter the individual's full name and email address, and click Send Invitation. The Import Members feature enables you to add and invite multiple students at a time. To import members, start by creating an invitee list. Create a spreadsheet with column names exactly as shown, full name, email, external ID. The values in the external ID may be left blank. Download the student data as a CSV file. Here are the steps to import students using your CSV invitee list. From the Invitation tab, click Import Members. Follow the instructions in the Coursera dialog. When you complete the Import Members step, the students receive an automatic invitation email from Coursera. Your students are now ready to start learning on Coursera by opening the Google Cloud EDU invitation email with the subject line, You're invited to learn on Coursera. In the email, students may click Join Program to join the Associate Cloud Engineer track. The student can then enroll in the first course, Google Cloud Platform Fundamentals, Core Infrastructure. We have reviewed steps for your account setup in Coursera, student invitations, and learning progress monitoring. Hello and welcome. I wanted to preview the interactive hands-on labs platform called Quick Labs and how you're actually going to be practicing a lot of the things that you're going to learn here inside of real Google Cloud Platform accounts. But you don't need your own credentials. Those are actually going to be provided for you. So let's take a look at how the labs platform is set up. On the right-hand side is your instructions pane for the actual lab. Now, this lab is a meta lab. It's all about quick labs in general. But whatever your course is, this is where the instructions for completing the lab are going to take place. So you always want to keep this prompt open. Now, once you actually click Start Lab, a provisioned instance of the Google Cloud Platform, complete with any additional uh, instances or say you're working with VMs, if there's something that the lab provider wanted you to have, it's actually going to be created inside of this lab instance for you, which is a great, it's a sandbox instance. Now once you notice I click Start Lab, I have 15 minutes to complete this lab. I promise you that the timers are going to be associated with additional padding for the labs that you're going to do. This isn't going to make it take us 15 minutes, this will take us maybe about 5 minutes. So now as I mentioned before, you have the username and password and a project ID. What I'll ask you to do now is click on Open Google Console. And once you've opened Google Console, you'll be asked to sign in with your email. Now, the key thing here is if you use Google Resources before, immediately you'll start typing in your personal email. I do it all the time. Make sure you go back to your lab credentials screen and copy and paste the username that's auto-generated for you. This is going to be unique for you, and it's actually going to be unique for every lab that you run. So you'll be creating a new student account for each lab that you run. Copy and paste that password, which is going to be different from mine, so don't worry about uh, copying that down. Click Next in your browser paste in that password, accept the terms, don't worry about setting up a secondary phone number, accept the terms of the Google Cloud Platform, and once you see a screen that looks like this, then you're good to go. Make sure, a uh, key tidbit, is this is your project selector. It should be this auto-generated Quick Labs alphanumeric. If you should s happen to see something that says either select a project, or if you see something that says Quick Labs Resources, you actually want to click on this and make sure to select your alphanumeric Quick Labs ID and then go ahead and uh, hit open. Once you're within here, you're good to go. So follow the instructions for the rest of the lab. It's going to guide you through what products and services that you're going to be working with. You can access the menu of products and services in the upper left-hand corner here. Or if it's a lab that's working with Cloud Shell, all the way up here is the button to activate Cloud Shell, which will bring open that terminal instance for Google Cloud Platform. Last few things. Back here, you'll see that our timer is automatically running still. Once you're completed with the lab, you're done with it, 
Now make sure in order to get your completion stats re properly recorded, click on End Lab. You'll be faced with a prompt that says, are you all done? Once you click End Lab, your project, any data sets, anything that you've been working with inside of this sandbox project is going to be deleted. So make sure if you have any queries that you're running or any interesting notes that you have saved inside of your Google Cloud Platform Quick Labs account, that you copy and paste those and save them somewhere else, uh, perhaps in your own personal Google Cloud Platform account or somewhere locally on your machine. And once you've clicked End Lab, then you can enter feedback for the lab and you can continue moving on. So again, quick recap. The number one th key things to remember is in order to get those credentials here on the left-hand side, you have to click Start Lab, which again kicks off the timer. And there's no way to pause once the lab is started. But again, keep in mind you have multiple attempts. And lastly, click on End Lab when you're ready to completely complete out the lab that you've been working on. That's it. Good luck with the lab and enjoy. The what are the next steps? Here are the next steps to get started with the Associate Cloud Engineer track. First, log in as a Coursera admin. You should have received a link via email. Next, create a CSV file with the names and email addresses of students and enroll them in the program. Conduct Study Jam 1 for the students who have enrolled. Study Jam 1 is a workshop aimed to introduce your students to the program and learning platforms. Review faculty FAQ if you have any questions. Here is a checklist that you can use to keep track of all the activities you'll need to complete. The checklist can be accessed from the faculty FAQ page. To summarize, your goals are as follows. As a learner within the Associate Cloud Engineer Track timeline, complete the architecting with GCP specialization on Coursera. Finish extra practice with Quick Labs. Use the available 100% discount for faculty on the Associate Cloud Engineer certification exam. As a coach for your students within the Associate Cloud Engineer Track timeline, conduct three study jams for the Associate Cloud Engineer Track. Ensure that all students complete the Architecting with GCP specialization on Coursera within the timeline prescribed in the Coursera program invitation. Ensure that all students prepare for the Associate Cloud Engineer certification exam and use the available discount. With the Google Cloud Associate Cloud Engineer Track, help your students reach high and lead them to a cloud-first world.